Hi, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Q&A for our mentors again in this time with Toby Oliver. Uh, he is the ex-CTO of Typhoon. He built the tech team at the beginning and now he's operating Bravo Studio as a, CTO, as a CEO. Um, right now, let's go with the questions. So first one, which is your favorite content in whichever format and why? Um, I would say probably my favorite kind of would be the podcast that Reid Hoffman, the um, founder of LinkedIn uh, and one of the founders of PayPal that does blitz scaling. Uh, it talks a lot about growing uh, tech teams and it's really interesting the way that he, he gets some, some of the great entrepreneurs uh, over the last few years and to, talks to them about their stories. Um, it's always interesting to see what other people have done. War stories are one of my favorite things to hear about because um, you can learn a lot from what how other people have done and the, and the things that they've had they've experienced. Yeah that's great. What about your favorite working app? Uh, it's got to be Notion. Um, Notion's amazing. Um, what I really like about it is it's not it's not prescriptive in how what it does. It's an incredibly flexible tool, but it lets you work the way you want to and still achieve a huge amount of tasks. Plus, also uh, one of the guys I used to work with, David Apple, is currently the head of sales there. So uh, uh, I've got a personal interest in making sure it does well. Yeah, I'm using it a lot as well. What about your reference leader? So it's a bit of an odd one, but um, one of my favorite leaders is, is General Mathis, who uh, used to be the uh, Secretary of Defense in the US. Um, he's a bit of a crazy guy. His nickname was Mad Dog. Um, but what was interesting about him is he was an incredibly compassionate leader who really empowers his team um, and making them equals. And, uh, you know, the, the, what that really led was the incredible um, sort of uh, trust that his team had in him and, and, and incredibly prepared to do whatever he asked him to do. And I think that's the kind of leader that I would I'd aspire to be, helping everybody, really being a servant leader rather than a dict dictatorial one. Now, and related to that, uh, which would you say that is the number one skill everyone needs to become a successful leader in technology? Uh, so it's probably so many, but I would say that particularly, I think is interesting for me is the ability to uh, appropriately apply your knowledge and experience, you know, for the, for the situation or the uh, environment you're in. You know, there's so much different bits of information and ideas out there, but being able to choose the right one for the right period of time is incredibly important uh, because not every solution works for everybody or for, for all times. Yeah. So now you're acting as a CEO, but uh, what do you like most of being CTO? What was new right about CTO was being able to kind of um, be the the, the, cro the crossover point between the product and technology, where you can really get get see the latest developments and be involved in those and help bring them to help get the product deliver faster. It's a great position to be in to be able to see both sides. Great. And um, which is the biggest challenge you have faced as a leader in tech? Um, I would say probably was one of the times the time form where we had a bit of an issue and one of the developers deleted a whole bunch of our users' data uh, and, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to resolve that without basing, having all the users lose, tr lose trust in our company was incredibly uh, delicate and have a diff difficult situation to work through. Now, and which was uh, the takeaway of this bad experience? I really don't rush into things. Take just be calm, uh, get all the information you can and try and make the best decision of what you've got, right? You're basically panicking is the worst thing you can do in that situation. Yeah. You need to make sure you do the right thing. Yeah, difficult not to panic. <laughs> really of... hard, really hard. It's particularly a lot of people, like, yeah, but you have a CEO shouting at you, you know, lots of people users are upset. How do you make sure you make a right call or, or the best call you can in that situation? It's difficult. Yeah. So um, if you can give only one single tip for aspiring CTOs, uh, I would say always try and build up a great team and just basically get out of their way and help get things out of their way so they can deliver. That's the most important thing because, you know, it's one of the real challenges you have is particularly when you're an early CTO founder, you know, you want to get involved in everything and keep being involved. But, you know, to scale, you really need to kind of build the team to scale. You, you can't scale. And so you need to make sure that you're, you're building the team to really get the stuff done. Yeah. So time for the technical question in your expertise area. And, and today for you, we have chosen um, how can you balance the needs of product with the tech development that needs to be done? 
Uh, well, I mean, the simple answer is you can't. I mean, the difficulty is you're constantly trying to balance what product wants, always trying to drive user value and delivering features with you know, reducing tech debt and then making sure the team can move faster. And those two things are very orthogonal. It's not easy to match those two across. I mean, there's lots of times I struggle at Typeform to be able to tell you the product team, hey, we need to do this. And they say, okay, well, what's the user value? Well, there isn't any because it's just like, it's a binary, everything's going to die or it's going to be okay. So I think really, Really, I think what we came to was rather than try and pretend and make make up some uh, weird uh, kind of metrics, is basically to have really strong trust between product and tech, so you can have a good conversation about. Look, I need to get this done, and they trust you that you, you're making the right call, and you trust them that they're not they're going to give you the space to do that, and that you know that, that, that if there's a really big product need, then you can say, okay, let's that and take priority. I think that for me was the best way of moving it forward is making sure that relationship is strong, and you can have those those conversations regularly and make sure you're prioritizing correctly. Most of the other time, it just seems to be a lots of extra documentation that doesn't work. You know, you need to do this in an efficient way. And I think the trust is a key part in doing that. Great. So yeah, thank you so much for this Q&A, Toby. And see no you soon. Nice to, nice to be here. Thanks. <laughs>